If you don't do a Forge Fast Expand build with the fastest possible Nexus you can afford, fast forward the game to 10 minutes, look at exactly how much you mined, it's always going to be less. Mm -hmm. So whatever tech choice you had, whatever unit composition, you're going to have less stuff. Yeah. The only way that it's okay to do that, if you can get some sort of advantage in the early game. But the only way to get an advantage is if the Zerg makes a mistake. Yeah. So I feel like the better the Zerg opponent is, the more senseless it is to try and catch them with some kind of weird gateway or cybernetics warp gate timings. Now, what about... I mean, that's a very good answer. Uh, what about... What do you think about, like, for instance, what Nanawa did against DRG? Like, one gateway, no units, Nexus. To yeah. make it so he doesn't have to waste money on the early forge and cannon. I thought that was a pretty terrible build, but yeah. I think Dongregu was reacting really horrendously, and that's why it looked so so much like a, a boxing match. Mm. But, like, do you think that Nanima will do that again? Play a whole best no. of five like that oh, against no, no, Dongregu? No. That, that was clearly, in my opinion, something uh, very planned out, yeah. that best of five. But that proves that the build is bad, but it's only okay if you surprise the opponent with it. Well, uh, we do see here... Very standard from these guys. Uh, no cannon up quite yet, but he's only making two links, so this shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Delaying that cannon to get the, the gateway and more probes first. Those two links will get in just before the cannon is finished, so he needs to keep that probe there and uh, block off that gap with the pylon. Uh, no, uh, no gas yet. Just now getting the gas. I thought he'd get it just a slightly bit earlier than that. Uh, but with only one gas in construction right now, this could be something a little bit crazy or a little bit tricky as well. And uh, he's not going to close the gap. Like I said, the links get in before the cannon is completely finished. And they do choose to back off. Oh, and he had a probe, it looks like. Yeah, it only just that. came in time to uh, block that off. Mm. That was close. Well, he's still got only one gas, but the Overlord is actually going into the main base. Normally, if you get just one gas, you're going to do like a super quick seven gate or something like that. Where Without upgrades. Yeah, yeah, you're literally just going to walk across the map and do a crazy all-in. Now, Calm sees that there's no Overlord. I mean, uh, Calm sees with the Overlord that there's no second gas, and then the second gas goes up. But still, he's going to be watching for yeah. something crazy happening, just in case. Yeah, that's definitely true, Artosis. He's, he's wary, if anything. I mean, mm -hmm. that gas even got created right smack under the Overlord's face. Yeah. It might almost be like a fake gas. It could be. So Calm needs additional information. He, he's saying right now, I need more input. I wouldn't be surprised if he sacrifices an Overlord at some point, or mm. just plays it safe if he doesn't scout. Well, he did get that really quick gas, that one gas that he got uh, very, very fast here. And that's going to allow him to at least get his speed up very quickly. Mm. And that's it's a smart move, because if your opponent is going for like a one gas build, as you mentioned before, Grubby, no no upgrades, so Zerglings are actually very viable at helping to hold this off. Yeah, that's true, and z normally if the Protoss is on a lot of sentries, only Zerglings can't actually save you against massive mm -hmm. gateway attacks. Against the one gas build and no upgrades, links, speed links are totally enough. They're mm -hmm. all you need to hold this off, so probably going to be upgrading speed links anytime now that he has 100 gas. Yeah. Uh, and we do have a ton of gates being warped in here. Now, the Overlord has come back. He's going to see that there's not many probes on that gas, and that's going to reaffirm some of his suspicions. We do have plus one on the way. I feel like he should actually think about canceling that plus one, because that's not even going to come into play by the time this rush is yeah, that's really on the way. That's true. It is not aligned. That might be a faking plus No, he's chrono boosting it, so I guess he wants the plus one, but... Eventually. He wants to have it after the it's already been decided whether it's really going to work out or not. Mm. Well. Uh, the Roach Warren is finishing. For now, he's just making speed links and uh, Zerk links. He, he might have enough to cancel those pylons if he chooses to focus them. Yeah, he's not really focusing on that, though. And, you know, this I feel like this Stalker is peripheral. It's not going to kill all the Zerk links off. Maybe pressuring the pylons or the probe would have been nice. But here we go. The Zealots are being warped in now. And plus one. He's spent a ton of Chrono. Look at that. It's almost done. Yeah, nice uh, Chrono boosting that out in time. But these Zealots, they're going to have a moment where they're going to be doing really good. Ooh. Nice! around there on that queen. Eight roaches, however, are in production, and Calm, he's saving those links. He's not throwing them at the Zealots. Very smartly waiting till roaches are out, and now Micro Advantage is tilting in Calm's favor, being able to kite those Zealots. 
very nicely with those roaches. And he did attack the pylon for a bit, but did not end up finishing off. Doesn't really matter, though. He has plenty of roaches and speedlings. And at this point, he can even surround those zealots if he sends the roaches as well. But he's going to take out this pylon first. And uh, very nice hold there by Calm. Look at the supply at this point. 49 to 92. Yeah, if we take a look at the probe count, we've got 39 probes. Probe production has been resumed, but so has drone production. And with those larvae, Calm will be able to reproduce workers much faster. Mm. Nine in production right now, we saw. And he will be getting his drone count to a very ideal number of roughly... 62 to 70 or so uh, yeah. as long as he just keeps tabs on whether Protoss is trying to plan a second all in or gonna expand he should be able to respond perfectly to anything that's gonna happen he really should and in fact look at this the roach is coming up to do a little bit of pressure sees what's going on that's a lot of information I'm okay with him losing those few roaches to see okay you're going robo you have the sentries out I see no more upgrades being made at the moment a good amount of information. Yeah, four roaches were lost and it was so worth it. Like he said, Artosis, he killed two zealots, got all that information, and now I think the ball is in Khan's court. Mm. How is he going to decide to prepare for this? Basically, theoretically, he doesn't need another drone at this point. Yeah, you, I have to agree with you on that, Grubby. I mean, 62 drones already. His tech is underway. His upgrades are underway. But what is the plan here? Is this actually going to be like a sentry drop? But a four sentry drop. Okay, so it looks like he, I think he's actually just going to go for the drones, not the ramp. Yeah. But oh, uh, actually, now that you mentioned the ramp, that might be his only way to still win this yeah, game. Yeah, that's it's like such a powerful move uh, to do. But what are the odds of him getting over there undetected and getting this done? It seems very low. Well, uh, no Overlord coverage, but he's flying through the Zonaga Tower. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he, he is. Yep, yep, yep. He if he just went a little bit more away he would have got here in time but he flew through the periphery of that Zell Naga Tower now gonna drop the sentries he could trap all the links in the main base but there's still roaches on the outside yeah this looks like it is doomed to failure at this point and in fact he's gonna go home with that war prism probably just to drop the sentries off he should be out on the map with the war prison no matter what, trying yeah. to keep the Zerg at bay. Yeah, that is, uh, that's a very good point. So basically, guys, what we're seeing here is a, a five-gate all-in from SKTB, followed up by a potential lock you out of your main base, war prison lock all-in with sentries. And now he's on the third part of this strategy, which is going to go for Colossus and a third base. Now, it will be incredibly difficult <laughs> to hold this uh he's not holding this i don't think i mean look at this his his sentry count is at six he's his supply is half of his opponent it's a 190 zerg against a 95 of protoss he's gonna have to back up and in the meantime that drop is on the way so even if he holds this he's not gonna have enough units to hold everywhere yeah, and a nice baiting out those force fields there by Calm. Now gonna go for this base, and it's open! Lynx will get into the main base, there'll be absolute havoc being wreaked everywhere. Will there be warp ins for uh, SKTB to deal with that th threat in the main base? Oh, and the multi-pronged harassment coming up, pushing into this third base again, already killing off three sentries, four sentries now going down, and his Nexus will have to be cancelled. And again, even if uh, SKTB holds this, that drop upgrade is almost done. Yeah, everything is in a perfect situation for Kami. As Pathogen glance finished, Force Fields late once again. He's getting in way too close, way too comfortable here. SKTB, he's, he's got those Immortals, but he doesn't have enough support. The walls are crumbling, Artosis. Oh. Links are everywhere. Seriously, they are all over. He's dancing them, in fact. Oh, wow, look at that. Calm just completely calm and confident in his <laughs> victory here. Dancing his Lings instead of letting them attack. And, I mean, he should be. Look at this. His Infestors are even going to be coming out soon. Yeah, he could even be dropping uh, Bro Fester hit squads here into the main base. Everything is ready for that. All the Overlords are conglomerated in the bottom left base. But it looks like he doesn't actually need them to gain purchase into yeah. the main base. As there is a, a big welcome sign by SKTB that allows access of links all the time there at that bottom ramp. Usually when Protoss goes for a third, they lock off the natural completely. Uh, he yeah, has neglected yeah. to do that. And in fact, with those four cannons there, that would have been uh, a far superior choice to lock it off completely. So I'm a little bit surprised by that as well. Um, but, you know, his first two phases of the all-in really literally did zero damage. And when that's what you're working with, zero damage for like a two-phase all-in-y type situation into an expand, 
someone who has taken no damage like Calm is going to come right back, and you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Now there's this tiny, tiny glimmer of hope for SKTB here. Calm lost a fair amount of worker uh, units, and he was only working off of 58 drones or so because he was making some buildings. So that is not uh, a drone count that creates this massive bank for Zerg. And that is why Calm is currently not at 200 supply and not going to be there in the next uh, half minute to a minute. Uh, well, he's going to be there in a minute for sure. But he's not there right now. And that gives a tiny glimmer of hope for SKTB. Yeah. He just forced a cancel in the fourth. That's a big deal. And there you go. Does get that force field down. So these Ling's not going to do as much damage as they have previously. But again, as soon as Calm feels like he needs it, he's going to start dropping. And how is SKTV ever going to leave his base? He doesn't have blink upgrades. He has no Stargate of any type. Basically, he has no mobility to stop someone with, uh, with drops. And yeah, now the, one of the most decisive fights in this game could be happening now. Fungal Growth going to go on those Colossi. No focus fire down on those Colossi yet. So SKTB isn't doing too poorly here. Uh, he doesn't have enough sentries though to keep those roaches far away from him. One Colossus goes down. Infestors get up close and will get focused down here. Not a bad fight at all by SKTB, but the numbers of Com are too numerous. And actually, you know, he's he's done a good job coming back so far. That that battle, definitely, as you said, he didn't target down any Colossus. There was a lot of value there gained by SKTB, but he doesn't have a lot of sentries anymore. So the next max is going to be even scarier than the last. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is definitely developing to how it, I did foresee it could happen since uh, Calm threw away quite a lot of units. He's been... He just tried another run by with those links, and he fought this fight basically without immediately taking care of the Colossi. And we know how good they are standing behind this Protoss army. But eight corruptors about to pop out, so those ah. corruptors are going to be able to target down uh, the very small amount. He's going to have two Colossi here in a moment. So two Colossi against eight corruptors, that's a good count for Calm. But look at that, Calm even burrowing at the third base. He's doing everything very well at this point. Yeah, he's putting SKTB entirely all in. Now the cor Corruptors are going to take down those Colossi. And uh, this Colossus is going to go down immediately. Now Roaches oh. are going to reign supreme. All he needs to do is take down those Immortals, and there'll be nothing left but gateway units. That's right, only one force field, three force fields total, even thrown. And that was a pretty one-sided game right there. I mean... It, it was uh, some good ideas by SKTV, but Com scouted very well. That first Overlord that went into the main, I think that really, that the amount of information he gained with that, the fact that he got that quick speed up, the quick gas, uh, that's really where it went into his favor, and yeah. he never let go. Yeah, I mean, basically when you see the Protoss is only working off of one gas, you know that everything that you could possibly tech to is gonna be later. So just play a little bit more safe, Restrain yourself a little bit from making more drones and get that army out in time. That's what he did. It paid huge dividends for him. And Calm was almost in a position where it was impossible to lose the game afterwards. And even though he wasted money on drops, which he didn't end up using, he had such a big lead that uh, even with uh, kind of bad fights, he was still able to yeah. uh, win this game. Now, does that game make you extremely confident for Calm's ability to deal with the, uh, SKTB in the next game? Yeah, I mean, SKTB didn't necessarily do anything wrong with what he chose as his strategy initially, uh, but Calm knew how to scout, right? He's sending that Overlord just right. I think he probably is looking at this and saying, well, I'm, I'm the Chinese champion. This guy just got here. He's a dark horse. He's... I'm definitely better than this guy. What can I do to assure my victory? And that's sacrificing a little bit of economy, a little bit of units to get information. And we saw that time and time again. We saw it with Zerklings. We saw it with the Roaches move up on the natural and with that Overlord in the start. Sometimes when players are of very equal level, you say, I'm not going to scout at all. I have a pretty good idea of what both of us are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I want to save every little bit of money I can to make my build that much more efficient. The more you think you're better than your opponent, the more you end up actually spending money on scouting. Absolutely true. I mean, that's... And we can see that uh, in, like, really intelligent top-end players play. You can see them actually cut those corners, uh, whether they think they're worse or better or the same. For instance... Uh, I don't know if you watched Rain vs. Last in OSL. Yep. Three all-ins in a row. Kid starts going gate, robo, gate, expand. Just because 
And that's that's basically what we saw from Khan yeah. there. It's not as crazy as what I just said, but yeah. sacrificing that early Overlord, uh, getting that into that position, uh, it's it's so intelligent, and it really saved him there. So I think he's going to keep that up, yeah. and I think it's going to be unbelievably